Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the last edition of our first round of Corn Train. My name is Maddie, and I'm with the Northern Rockies Museum. And it's really hard to believe that we've been doing this for six weeks already. That is amazing, and you guys have been so wonderful. Thank you for joining us on this lovely adventure. And I know today from my happy thoughts jar, I am putting in that I am happy about quarantine and all the fun that Tara and I have had with you guys through the course of all of this. So thank you so much. And hello to everybody who's watching. Hello, Malaya. Uh, so we are going to be making this today. Uh, it's a really, really, really cool craft and you can use it. Uh, um, you can eat off of it, truly. You just got to hand wash it. And hello, Georgia and Eloise. So the supplies today uh, you should have in your kits. And if you don't have them in your kits, you can go and get these. So uh, you're going to need some masking tape. If you did get our kits, the masking tape should be on your plate. Don't take it off. You don't need to take it off. As uh, so a masking tape, you're gonna need a paintbrush. I've got two. I just have a really big one because it'll make it go faster when I am doing the gluing. And a smaller one for doing my decorations. And a pair of scissors. And a palette to put my paint on. And if you got our kits, then you should have your package of glue and a package of paint in there. And you will need a piece of canvas or a similar type of fabric. So if you had just some white cotton lying around, that would work too. Um, or even if you had some cool designed uh, fabric, that would be neat too. And then you just don't even paint anything on it and then you would glue this on. And then uh, your plate, and you can see I've got my, um, my masking tape on my plate here. And the last thing is the printable here. So this is actually a a plate holder. So we'll be making this as well. And you will need just some glue, glue stick or whatever to uh, glue this together. So the first thing we are going to do is get our palette out and we are going to put some paint into our palette. Oh, and there's one thing I forgot. Make sure that you have a cup of water and you're going to need lots of water for this project. So just like I did on all the other videos, I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut um, the corner of our little bag here of paint. Just gonna make it easier. Great, so that one's good. And then I'm also gonna do that for my glue. And you can use different colors. We just picked blue, but if you wanted to do rainbow on your plate, you could do that too. I know for uh, one of the projects we used this for at the museum, we did um, autumn leaves and uh, a tree scene. So that was really pretty. So I've got my glue and my paint and my palette and I've got my canvas in front of me. And so I'm just gonna actually grab my plate here and I am going to flip it so that the top is facing up. Top is facing up. And you can use a pencil or a pencil crayon to do this, or you can just cut it out with a pair of scissors too, but I'm just gonna trace out the shape of my circle or my plate onto the canvas here. Doesn't have to be anything too fancy. Okay, so I've got my circle sketched out on there. You guys can see that. And when I'm going to cut this out, I'm going to leave a little bit of extra around the outside edge. So I'm going to make this circle just a little bit bigger than what I drew it. And that'll help to make sure that it's the same size as our plate. So I am going to cut out my circle now. And it's okay if your circle is too big because you can always cut that off after you're done gluing it. But it's a lot harder to add canvas if it's too short. So cut all the way around. 
And make sure you have really sharp scissors. Sharp scissors, make sure that you have nice clean cut when you're cutting fabric. If you have dull scissors, you kind of get frayed edges and we want a really nice crisp edge on our plate. So I have my circle now. So the side that I put my circle around that I drew on, I'm gonna put that face down. And this side, the side that doesn't have the drawing on it is the side that I'm going to paint on now. So I'm just gonna put my scissors aside. I'm gonna put this extra fabric away. And I am going to start to paint my design. So on my example, what I did is I had the word love in the middle. And uh, this week, Tara was showing you guys about human rights and how it's important to respect everybody around you and um, you know how that we all have responsibilities um, to make sure that we look after everybody's rights. And so I thought this was a good word. Today, I am gonna do hope. That's gonna be my word of the day on my plate. So I am going to first write that word in the middle of my plate. So I'm gonna do that in the middle. And I am going to, again, just sketch it out. Uh, you can just free hand it too if you wanna do that. But you wanna make sure that you don't draw really hard because it might come through the paint and it might look a little weird. So just wanna sketch out your idea. So I'm just gonna write that word in there. So I'm just gonna write hope. So I've got hope in the middle of my plate. And if you're not sure if it's in the middle of your plate, you can take your plate and you can put it over top and look down and see, did you get it in the right spot? And I think I got my hope right where it needs to be. So I can take my paintbrush now and I, whoops, I am going to paint out the word hope on here. Now, this canvas isn't gonna be like the canvas we painted on when we did our birch art. That stretch canvas has something on it called gesso, and it's a primer, and it makes painting on canvas really easy. This canvas isn't primed, and so it's gonna soak up a lot of paint today. So the best way to get your paint nice and flowy is to add lots of water to it. So I am gonna just pour a little bit of my water into one of these um, dishes into my palette here. And I'm going to be mixing my blue paint into that water to make it nice and thin. And you may also want to put a plastic sheet down or something down on the table because it will bleed through your canvas onto the table. So I am going to start mixing up my thin blue paint here. And then I'm gonna start painting that word hope onto my picture. And take your time. Maybe you don't wanna do hope, maybe you wanna put your name on this. That would be kind of cool, like your family's last name. You know, lots of people have, a long time ago would have dishes that would sit on a mantle of a fireplace or on the walls and it would have either their family crest or their family name on it. So you could kind of recreate that with this. I'm just gonna mix up some more paint here. Now doing the H in hope, and I did my hope in handwriting, but you can do yours however you want. You could do it in bubble letters, truly, if you wanted to do that. So I'm just gonna show you guys. So you can see I've got the H and part of an O on there. So I'm just gonna keep writing out on this. But before I do that, I wanna show you guys something um, that you wanna try to stay away from. So when you're painting and your paint isn't wet enough or you don't have enough paint on your brush, you will start to get some dry brush looks on it. And so I'll show you what that looks like. 
So see how it's not solid on there? It's not a solid color. We wanna make sure that it is as solid as we can. Oh, you did your name, that's awesome, that's perfect. So I am gonna keep writing hope on here. And you might wanna go over yours a couple of times, just to make sure, and I think I got paint on my hair. Yes, I did, let's just get rid of that. All right, so I'm gonna finish writing hope on here. And you guys obviously are a lot faster than I am on this. I'm just taking too much time. And this would be a very cute gift for somebody too, or something that you could hang up in your room. Be a good plate for cookies at night. Right before you go to bed, a cookie, that would be nice on your plate. Before you brush your teeth though. Don't brush your teeth and then eat cookies, that's not good. All right, finally finished it. So here is my hope. So the next thing I'm going to do, and you guys can sketch it out with your pencil crayon. I'm not gonna do that. I am just gonna go freehand and go crazy on this. I am going to draw some leaf shapes and some vine shapes coming into the middle of my hope. And you guys could also do some flowers on here too. Um, you could do butterflies, whatever you want to do. Um, so, but I'm gonna do kind of similar what I did to the last one with some swirly vines and leaves and um, maybe a flower or two in here. And again, I'm gonna make sure that my paint is nice and thin while I'm doing this. So mix up some more paint. And then here we go. And actually, I am going to connect, if you see here, whoops, my hope, I'm going to connect this part of hope onto one of the vines and this part of the E onto one of the vines. So it looks like it's all part of the same thing here. So here we go, starting off with the E. I'm just going to do some little swirls around here. And I find if you go nice and slow, I know you have to have a really steady hand for this though, if you go nice and slow, the paint has enough time to soak into the canvas and it'll make a nice crisp line. I'm gonna do the same onto this side here. bit more water to my paint. So I originally picked this blue color paint for this project because it reminded me of those old fashioned teacups, tea sets that would be white china or porcelain and then you'd have those beautiful intricate blue designs on them and I'm sure there's a, a proper name for them but we're gonna call them blue designs today. All right, so I've got my hope on there and I'm gonna just start doing a bunch of squiggles on here. Coming from the inside and working my way out. And please, let me see what your guys' picture looks like, or your plate rather, at the end of this. I have loved seeing all of your guys' work um, as it comes in. That's been really cool. And as Tara said yesterday, this is our last day of our package part of uh, Quarantrain. So we're still gonna continue on with Quarantrain, but we're gonna do something a little different, I think, in the future. Still do some online classes like we've done today, um, but they might be in a little bit of a different format, which I think is good. Change is good. All 
All right, so I've got a couple of swirls on there. See, and I also connected the P on my hope down. Now I'm gonna do some up on the top here. So let's do some swirls up here. And I know my canvas is folded and so I've got these weird ridges on here, the creases. So it makes it a little hard to paint. So just take your time around those edges so you don't get big gobs of paint there. All right, thin out some more paint and keep going. Okay, I'm going to do one more vine and then I am going to do some leaves on this. Okay, so I've got all of my lines done and now I'm going to do some leaves on here. So for my leaf shape, I am going to do like an almond almost. So I'm going to go up with my brush and down and then up and around like that. So I've taken a circle and I've pinched the sides of it. So I'll show you what I mean here, like an eye shape too. That's a good example. So I'm going to just... So there's one of my leaves. So I'm going to do a couple of those shapes around my plate. Yeah, those folds are not fun to paint around, that's for sure. All right. Absolutely fair. Just gonna make some more paint. And it might be nice too to do some extra swirls that aren't connected to anything in between here just to fill out your plate or just some random dots. That might be kind of fun too. And as you guys probably know, I'm a fan of glitter. So you could put some little drops of glitter glue on here too, to add a little bit of bling to your picture. All right. These leaves are coming in really good. They're really filling out my plate. And it's nice to have different sizes of leaves too. Okay, I've only got two more left. Two more left. Right, one more vine, put some leaves on this. Great. So I've got all of my leaves on and I'm going to add a couple of just random dots in there just for some little accents. And that's kind of fun. Fills out my picture a little bit more and I might do some different sized dots too. Might be fun to do stars too. Some over here on this curled edge. Okay, so I have my plate. We're all done this part. We need to let this dry before we put it onto our plate. So we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna grab our printable now and we're gonna work on our plate stand. 
So I'm just going to set this aside over here. Put my paint over here so I don't get my hair into it anymore. And I'm going to get my printable. This is the printable. So you want to cut out all three pieces here. Make sure you don't cut off the tabs. That's important that you don't cut them off, but just cut around each of the shapes. And you should have three shapes when you're all done. And you're more than welcome to color these in uh, before you cut them, or you could paint them after it's all together. That would work too. And if you are at home, these should be printed on card stock. I found when I was experimenting with this design, when I drew it up, that the regular paper just isn't strong enough to hold up the paper plate. Or not the paper, but the plastic plate, sorry. So I got one of my shapes cut out and I'm going to work on the next two. So I've got this shape done and this shape. So these are the two sides. There you go. These are the two sides of my plate stand. And then we're going to cut out the middle piece that is going to join these two together. And it's the thing that makes it strong. It's like the braces underneath the bridge. I've got that piece cut out too. I'm just going to clean up my space here. Oops. And you'll see here, we've got some areas that we need to fold to make some tabs. So I've got that triangle shape. So we're gonna start with the triangle shape and we're gonna fold this. So you're more than welcome to do the scoring um, that I showed you in previous videos with the ruler and either a pencil or an X-Acto knife. Um, I'm just going to use my fingers and fold it on the line today. So I've got one folded, one tab folded, and I'm going to work on the next tab over here. So I'm gonna fold those in. So this should look like a triangle now with those tabs folded in, you can see that. So I'm gonna set this aside and I'm going to grab my side piece that has the tab. You'll see here, it says tab A on it. So we're gonna fold this as well. So now we've got that part folded. So the first thing that we need to do is we are going to take our two side pieces and we are going to glue our tab together like this. That. So I'm gonna glue this together now. And again, I'm cheating, I'm using hot glue. So I'm gonna put some glue on here and stick it on. So it should look like this. Once it's glued together and it's folded, it's like this. So this part is where the plate is going to sit when it's on your stand, right? So now we're gonna take our triangle piece and you'll notice on your triangle piece that there are letters on here. And these letters show where you need to glue the tabs onto. So you'll see that there is a C, I think it's a a C and a D on there. So that C and the D is where this tab, this will fit. So we're gonna glue it right in there like that. So I'm gonna start with this side first. I'm gonna put a bit of glue onto that. And I'm going to put it on here, matching it up with 
the D. So see, I know it's kind of hard to see because it's white on white, but I've got that glued on there and I'm going to glue this side onto here now. You want to make sure that this triangle doesn't go past the bottom of this part here or else your stand isn't going to stand straight. So I'm going to put some glue on the other half here. And here is our plate stand. So I'm just going to test it with my plate that I haven't glued anything on. And I'm just going to sit this on here. And voila, we have a plate stand so that you guys can display your fabulous artwork momentarily because we are just about done here. So I'm going to put my plate over here. I'm going to put my stand over here and grab my artwork. So here it is. So you guys, your picture should be pretty much dry. If it's not dry, you can wave it around in the air. You can go take a blow dryer to it, but it should be pretty good to go. I've got a couple of little tiny wet spots, but it'll be fine. So I'm gonna take my plate, and if you did get our packages, you'll have that masking tape on it. You're gonna wanna take the masking tape off and just put it on the edge of your table for right now. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so there's one piece of masking tape, and let's do it on to the next one here, too. Great. So now we've got our plate, and we've got our canvas here. So what we need to do is grab our palette with our glue in it, and I am going to get my thicker brush, and I am going to put glue on top of the entire back of my plate. So the back is the part, I don't know if you can see that, it's the part that kind of comes up like this. So the part that would be on the table is the part that we want to be painting the glue onto. So I'm going to start painting the glue on now. And my glue is pretty thick, so I might want to go and put a little bit of water in it. It'll just help it be uh, painted onto the can or the plate rather um, a little easier. But you want to make sure that the entire surface of this plate is covered. Add a little bit of water and some more glue. Our entire plate is covered. And it's better yet, like I said, to have too much glue than too little glue. And I think I'm almost done. Oh, my glue is very like stringy. It's almost like slime. I, think I just have this one little area where my fingers have been. Oop. There we go. Great. So I've got it all glued and now I'm going to take my canvas and I am going to put it face down onto the glue and I want to make sure that it is centered so that I don't have to do too much moving while it's in the glue. So I'm just going to kind of go above my plate and match up all the edges like that. And you might have a little bit of extra. Like I said, it's better to have too much than too little. All right. So you're going to notice 
as you are pressing it down that some areas are going to be like, nope, I don't want to go down today. And that's fine because what we're going to do now is we are going to paint the surface of this with just water. We want this canvas to be soaking in water because that's going to mix with the glue underneath and it's going to soak up through the canvas and it's going to make this a lot more pliable and stick to your paper plate or sorry, your plastic plate better. So here we go. We're going to just paint this with water. And if you're finding that some areas on your plate just aren't going down, no matter how much water you put on them, you can put a bit more glue on top of your plate. So I'm starting with the middle of my plate painting it with that water. And you can see it's starting to change color here. So I'm adding lots of water, lots and lots of water. So you can see that that middle part has all been painted, but you'll notice that my sides are kind of bubbling up and that is not gonna look good for my plate. So I'm going to start doing the sides now. And this will help flatten out all of your creases that you had in your canvas too. It might take a while for the uh, creases to lie flat, uh, but just keep adding more water and then you can kind of play with it with your fingers like that. And that will help. And if anybody has time, please check out our survey that Tara has posted in the comment section. That would be a really big help to us. So I'm using my hands and I'm just kind of pressing down on the sides here, um, making sure that it's gluing down. And then I'm working my way over here. And you can see this side's like really does not want to come down. And you might get glue on your hands, but that's part of the fun of this project, I think. So they get a little bit messy. I think that's my favorite part of art in general, is getting messy. I think that's what makes it fun. As you're going around, you might notice that some of your edges that you've already done are starting to roll up, even though they were flat. And so when they start doing that, you can take your masking tape and you're gonna rip off a little strip. So I'm just gonna rip off this piece here and I'm going to tape around my plate, starting at the back and then around to the front to hold my canvas in place. So any place that you find is, I don't wanna be here, even though you did have it lying nice and flat, make sure you put some tape on it. If you haven't worked on it yet, you haven't put water on it, don't put any masking tape on it yet. You need to make sure that you have tried to lay it flat first before you go and start putting the tape on. So I've almost got most of the sides done here. And I am just using my finger to go around and fix any of the edges that aren't going down or aren't uh, forming to the plate like I would want them to be forming to the plate. Great, so I'm going to add another piece of tape on this corner here because it is not happy with me. So I'm going to stick some tape here and around. And don't worry um, about if you're thinking that your tape is gonna glue onto your project, the masking tape just peels off so lovely once you're all done and it has dried. Love masking tape for that. You can do so many cool things. Uh, just think of our birch painting we did with the masking tape that turned out so cool thanks to masking tape. All right, add some more water. And I'm pressing down with my fingers again, making sure that I have a nice solid seal on my plate. 
All right, so I'm going to add some more tape onto my edges here. I can get this piece out, there we go. So any of the areas that are curling up, and you may have to watch it over the next hour or so because some other edges might decide to whoop, curl up. Oh, I'm just gonna do another piece here. All right, let's do one right here. And around. And I'll do one over here. So I'm just gonna add a bit, cause I have extra glue. And if you guys have extra glue, do this. But I'm just gonna go over the back of my um, canvas one more time with this um, glue. And that is just gonna really set it in there. Um, just on the on the bottom and any areas that um, you know are lacking some glue. All right. I'm just gonna add a bit more water into some areas as well. But I think that I am all done now. So this is gonna take a couple hours to completely dry. And once it's all dry, you'll have a finished plate. But here is, whoops, mine's upside down, there you go. Here's what mine looks like. And then you'll be able to use your plate sand. Mine might not work right now because I need to cut some edges off, but ah, there you go. So um, after this is all dried, I'm just gonna trim around the outside edge just to make it look really, really, really nice and clean. And I'm really happy with the final result of this. So you guys can print off multiple plate stands and you can make a whole bunch of dishes. You can have a matching set, which would be really fun too. So thank you so much for joining us on this quarantine adventure. Hopefully we'll see you in the future with um, whatever quarantine turns into. And Tara and I are both very excited about that. If you have the opportunity, check out that survey and please like and share this video. It helps with the museum so very much. And please consider making a small donation on our website. And thank you guys for everything. And I hope to see you very, very, very soon.